Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you all are doing good. So in this video, we are going to cover an interesting topic that is phage typing. So let's start. So let's first understand about this term phage. So any virus which in fact and replicate inside bacterial cell is called as bacterial virus. And for bacterial virus, we most commonly use this term bacteriophage. Bacteriophage word has actually been taken from Greek, where the meaning of bacteria is bacteria and phage is eater. It means bacteria eater. And bacteriophage is also popularly known as phage. Now we are going to talk about our today's topic of discussion that is phage typing. So the use of phages or we can say bacteriophages or bacterial viruses for detection and identification of different strains of bacteria, usually single strains of bacteria is called as phage typing, right? Now you should note that phage typing is actually a kind of phenotypic method offering detection and identification of different strains of bacteria. And it is an important tool of the research and reference laboratory. Moreover, phage typing is widely used for epidemiological purpose like for disease surveillance and disease outbreak investigation studies, right? So this is all about in brief phage typing. Now we are going to talk about the principle of phage typing. So we are very much clear that identification of bacteria via phage usage is called as phage typing. This phage typing actually depends on two factors. First one, phage host range, which in turn can be of two types. It can be either broad or it can be restricted. If we are saying that a particular phage is having broad host range, it means this type of phage can attack on different type of genera, species and strains of bacteria. And if we are saying that a particular phage is having restricted host range, it means that phage can only act on some specific strains of bacteria, right? Now let's see the second factor on which phage typing depends, that is susceptibility or in other words we can say sensitivity or resistance of a bacterial cell towards attacking phage, right? Now question comes, which factor actually decides that what kind of host range a particular phage will be having? Or which factor will be deciding that whether a particular bacterial cell will be sensitive towards attacking phage or it will be resistance towards attacking phage? So it is actually decided by specificity of the phage surface receptors for bacterial cell surface receptors, okay? let's. Try to make this point more clear with the help of this animated presentation. Suppose we here have a bacterial cell and when we examine the surface of this bacterial cell, what we observe the presence of different surface components like pili, flagella, surface polysaccharides, surface membrane bound proteins. These surface components present in bacterial cell surface actually act as a cell surface receptors which are recognized by phage during its attack on the bacterial cell. It means recognition of bacterial cell surface receptor by bacteriophage is actually called as phage docking and this phage docking and specificity of phage surface receptors for bacterial cell surface receptors actually constitute the basis of phage typing. Right. Let's understand it with the help of this picture again. Suppose we are here having a phage of Staphylococcus aureus which is shown here in blue color. Right. And now when this phage is actually mixed with two different type of bacterial cells taken in two different type of tubes, one bacterial cell is of Staphylococcus aureus and other is of Salmonella typhi. Then what will we will be observing that here phage docking will only be occurring in this case because it will be getting that kind of surface receptors present on the surface of Staphylococcus aureus which can easily be recognized by its phage. But when it will be coming in contact with Salmonella typhi, then it will not be able to show phage docking because in this case phage will not be able to recognize the surface receptors present on Salmonella typhi surface, right? So this actually form the basis and helps us to detect a particular bacteria using specific type of phage for this particular bacteria. What we want to examine or what we want to detect and identify. So I hope you are clear about this principle. Now we are going ahead and talking about type of phages used in phage typing. So phages we are very much clear but here we should note that bacteriophages are further of two types. First type is virulent or lytic phages and second type is temperate or lysogenic phages, right? If we talk about virulent or lytic phages, these are those phages which when come in contact with a bacterial cell 
and their replicate inside bacterial cell they actually lead to the lysis of bacterial cell at the end of their replication cycle and if we talk about temperate or lysogenic phages these are those kind of phages when they come in contact with bacterial cell their genome actually get integrated inside the bacterial chromosome and rarely this happen that this integrated genome of bacteriophage get separated from the bacterial chromosome and it pursue lytic cycle right so this type of phages we call as lysogenic phages or temperate phages now we are not here going in detail about the lytic cycle and lysogenic replication cycle of phages we are here interested in knowing that what kind of phages are used in phage typing so of course the answer is virulent or lytic phages are actually used in case of bacteriophage typing right so let's continue now here we are going to talk about the basic steps involved in phage typing if we are interested in laboratory to carry out phage typing for an unknown bacterial culture we are interested in identifying that unknown bacterial culture then what kind of steps we will perform let's try to understand it in the form of three steps what i have included here let's see the first step first step will be preparation of lawn of unknown bacterial culture so here what we will be going to take we will be going to take our unknown culture of bacteria what actually we, we are interested in identifying and we will also be requiring what a solid microbiological medium petri plate means a petri plate containing solid medium nutritional medium that can support the growth of bacteria so this plate we will take and we will mark it as per our requirement right like here i have shown a plate which has been divided into four sections now we will inoculate this bacterial culture on this plate and the inoculation is actually a kind of heavy inoculation which should be able to make a kind of solid sheet when bacteria will grow that we call as lawn of bacterial strain right now in the second step what we will be going to do we will be inoculating phages on the plate which already has been inoculated with the bacterial culture what we want to examine or what we want to identify in this step what we will be doing we are going to take the same plate and now we are going to take four different type of phage suspension now we will be inoculating these phages in the form of spotting right so this is called as spot inoculation spot inoculation we will be performing for each type of phage on the petri plate already containing or we can say inoculated with the bacterial culture after this step means spot inoculation of phages in the petri plate we will be going for the incubation step incubation is generally performed at 37 degrees celsius right and for 24 hours after incubation we will go for the observation so in this observation part firstly what we are noticing that this bacterial culture what we have actually inoculated on the petri plate containing solid me nutritional medium it has actually grown right and here i have tried to show that growth in the form of this intense yellow coloration now let's note the second observation what we can see that in section number b there is clear zones right these clear zones are indicating what it means where we have made the spots of b phage there no growth of bacteria has occurred now you see these clear zones are called as actually plaques it means phage b was actually able to lyse the bacterial cells in the culture what was unknown to us now we will try to make this concept more clear by labeling these phage type with specific bacteria like a phage is of salmonella typhi b phage is of e coli type c phage is of staphylococcus aureus type and d phage is of pseudomonas aeruginosa type so at last what we can say that of course in b section lysis has been reported with this phage we were able to get the lysis it means this particular bacteria under examination is of e coli because phage type b is having specific cell surface receptors which can actually bind and recognize to the cell surface receptors of e coli only if e coli culture will be there only then b phage can act on bacterial cells and it can lead to lysis of the bacterial cells resulting in plaque formation right so this was all about some of the basic steps involved in phage typing i hope you are clear about all of these steps now at last we are going to talk about advantages and limitations of this particular technique what we call as phage typing so let's talk about advantages rapid and low cost approach it is secondly it is widely used as i previously told for epidemiological surveillance outbreak investigations right if we talk about limitations then of course different type of phages are required for identifying different type of species 
of bacteria or strains of bacteria it requires technical expertise right only technical people can handle and perform such kind of phage typing assays time consuming maintenance is there of phages right phages can also undergo different kind of mutations which can lead to lysogenic conversion or gain or loss of r plasmids right so this type of changes can also occur in case of phage types so this was all about our today's talk i hope you enjoyed it and if you found this content helpful then don't forget to press like and subscribe to our channel thank you so much keep watching